That's the uh, boat that goes over to um, Kualong. Yeah, hi. Um, today I'm on Quail Island, which is an island in the um, centre of Littleton Harbour. And what I'm doing is I'm walking the Quail Island track that goes around the outside of the island. So I'm on Quail Island. I'm just walking up to the dock hut here. Bit of a steep climb. Ah, so there's two ways to get to the hut. You can either head up the road there, and it's about another 100 metres, or if you go past that old shed over there, uh, it's about 200 metres around the hill. So we'll actually go that way. Quail Island served a number of purposes over the years and uh, one of the purposes it served was as a um, quarantine station. And so these are a set of stables for um, quarantining animals. Um, Shackleton and Scott, when they went down to the Antarctic, um, this is where they quarantined their horses. Yeah, so the trust that um, looks after the island is gradually restoring all this stuff. There's some really massive um, macrocapa trees here on the island. They were planted when people first came to Christchurch, so you know they're nearly 200 years old now. Um, they're really massively huge. Um, the base of that one over there would be probably two to three metres. There's a circuit around the outside of the island. I'm basically walking the circuit around the outside of the island. And that's the Otamahu Quail Island track. Um, takes about an hour and a half to go around. And so it continues on down that way. So the first section of the track is um, along the northern side of the island. Uh, on the way you pass a Department of Conservation hut. It's just up here in front of us. Yeah, really cool and funky. Um, and then you're walking along the top of the cliffs uh, down to the uh, southern side of the island. Done a magnificent job of fixing it up. It's really, really nice. I'd like to come stay here sometime. Otamahu Hut was an old um, farm building that was um, uh, fixed up by the Department of Conservation, turned into a, a hut. So it's a serviced hut, um, you have to book to use the hut. Uh, 12 bedrooms, uh, 12 bunks, sorry. Yeah, really nice. Just continuing on around the island. So uh, most of the track is like this. Um, just a mown strip of grass. Yeah, it's nice easy walking. There are a few hills to walk up and down though. Really awesome views. Great we walk around this island. Yeah, so there you can see the port hills behind me. Beautiful day today, really nice and sunny. Uh, great day for walking here. There's the uh, view out to the Littleton Heads. So you got Godley Head over on this side and Adderley Head over on the other side. Yeah. There's a big cliff in front of us that's like about 100 metres high. Yeah, uh, back in colonial times, they quarried rock off the front of the island, 
and uh, it's on most of the uh, buildings in Christchurch. There's some uh, people in some boats down there. Big main boat and a couple of kayaks. Uh, that gives you a bit of an idea of how rugged the side of the island is. It's all big massive seam cliffs like that. Yeah, when I get further around I'll look back this direction and you'll be able to see that massive big cliff. There's a uh, number of these interpretive boards around the island that basically give you an idea of the history. Yeah, so uh, it was never uh, constantly occupied even by the Māori but they used it as a seasonal um, uh, food gathering area because there were quail on the island and fish and shellfish around the shores. So there's a uh, trust that administers the island and what they want to do is um, re-clothe uh, it with the native bush that was once on top of it and so this is some planting that they've done here. Um, this planting here is about maybe 10-15 years old. Uh, manuka and some other species, um, that's what was on the island before Europeans arrived. Yeah, so um, eventually the whole island will be covered with this. And then there's also um, kahikatea trees, rimu trees in there, um, cabbage trees, flaxes, uh, all of the plants that used to live on this island. When you get to this point you've got two options, you can continue around the island or you can head off to the left and head into the centre of the island up to the summit. There's the track going into the centre of the island, uphill. Um, on the summit of the island there's actually like a statue up there and some interpretive panels. Um, I'll go up there from around the other side of the island. Um, what I'm going to do is continue on walking this direction. So I'm continuing on around the northern edge of the island. These plants here where had just been planted the last time I was on the island two years ago. So that kind of shows you how fast they grow. Um, only takes like about a decade for them to get to the size of those ones over there. Yeah. Great idea. I'm all for returning landforms back to the original form. So you can see the track running around the outside of the island there. Walking through an open area. That's an attractive view isn't it? I'm still on the northern side of the island. This is the original location of the um, first farmhouse. So there's been people farming the island since 1840 up to the present day. Um, yeah, so there was a farmhouse here at one stage. All that's left is the old shack clock cocker over there. It's a pity it's not still there, but it was just a shack. Um, there's an information board here that tells you about it. Like it was just a very small um, uh, shack like they built in the 1840s. Yeah and then the track just continues that way. I'm in harbour over there in the distance and then looking back along the track some people water skiing out there on the um, Littleton Harbour. Those are the massive cliffs on the uh, on the north side of the island. They're really really high, like I say they're about 100 metres high and you can see they're quite straight um, that's because they used to uh, they used to quarry rock off that side of the island for buildings in Christchurch. Um, Quail Island's basically a volcanic plug. So um, in ancient times, millions of years ago, where the island is is actually where the uh, lava was coming up from the L Littleton volcano. Those guys down there are diving. They've got a diving boy. Uh, the guys have got wetsuits on 
one of the dudes that's just about to go over the side. Good diving in Littleton Harbour, um, really really deep in points though so you have to be careful about where you're diving. I'm about a quarter of the way around the island track. Um, there's a wee seat here so I'm just going to sit down and have a wee break, have a, a drink and a snack. Yeah, um, it's got good views up Littleton Harbour, excellent views up Littleton Harbour. Just having an LCM bar and a drink of water. And uh, I'm just sitting on the seat here and looking at the view. It's incredibly, uh, incredibly warm where I'm sitting right here at the moment. So I'm just heading for that next headland there. There's a weird lookout point. Yeah. Um, if you come over to the island, you need to be prepared for all conditions. So hot, cold, windy, rainy, um, bring more gear than you think you're gonna need. Um, I've got three litres of water and that's probably just barely enough. So there's a uh, cliff there. It's a huge thing, it's like 60 metres down. So, where you see barriers like this, you have to pay attention to them, because if you don't, it's dangerous, and if you've got kids with you, keep an eye on your kids. Yeah. It's another seat up on the hill up there. Um, I'll stop and just let you see what the view is. So that's a view back along the axis of the island. So you can see all the native planting here, it stands out really well. Big seamount, cliffs over here, um, over where those trees are, um, that's where the dock is over there, and then the hut's roughly round about there. There's the view from that second seat. Really spectacular. So we're just walking up towards the high point of the island. Here's some new planting. Um, eventually these trees will be like that other native area. These are quite new, uh, probably about a year old. Over there in the distance you can see Sugarloaf, uh, which is a radio antenna overlooking Christchurch. And then over there, that's Governor's Bay. And so there's a road from Governor's Bay up past Sugarloaf and down to Christchurch. That's looking into the interior of the island. And you can see just on the top of the hill here, there's like a totem, almost like a totem pole. Um, yeah, um, we'll walk up there so you can have a look at it. It's like a, a Maori carving, um, really interesting. Uh, and there's like a bit of an interpretive panel up there telling you about Quail Island and how it was important to the local Maori. That's a kahikatea tree. Um, there's quite a few of them planted on the island. I don't know if there would have been kahikatea tree on the island before um, human impacts. Um, they normally like wet swampy ground but they've planted them here so obviously they must think they believe, uh, belong here. There's a few tracks that they have no signs, they don't tell you where they lead to but I think it's just access points for the um, people that work uh, on the island um, to get vehicles through. Yeah, they've got a couple of four wheel drives over here that they use for transporting material about the place. There's a water tap there for when they're watering all the plants because this is naturally a very very dry island and so yeah they save water in these tanks up on top of the hill and then um, pump it downhill to all the different places. So uh, there's a clay dam here that um, was built to hold water for stock. Um, still exists, they just um, they blocked up one end of the gully and then uh, the water backs up behind it, yeah. They had stock on the island until oh, maybe about 
maybe about five six years ago and now they've taken them all off the island as they're trying to regenerate all the bush yeah but they just kind of kept the grass under control well this is the halfway point on the quail island track uh, I've been walking for about an hour and 20 minutes so um, it's about 2 hours 30 um, 2 hours 40 all up yeah so um, at the moment I'm on the uh, south eastern side of the island and I'm making my way down to Shipwreck Cove So there's a number of uh, small bays around the island, that's one of them down there. Uh, can't walk down to it, there's no tracks down there. Yeah, they want to keep you away from the cliffs around the edge of the island. So um, all of the tracks are all a couple of hundred metres in from the edge. That's looking down to Shipwreck Bay. So what it was, was uh, basically um, old ships that weren't needed anymore, they dragged them around here, but over the years they've just basically broken down. Um, this big one down here with the ribs sticking up, um, that, that was quite a big ship actually, it was a 1500 tonne steamer. You used to be able to walk down there, um, but they discourage it now because people were stealing pieces of them. And you know, with anything, um, it's an it's a dark archaeological site. You're not supposed to like walk on it or touch it. But people were climbing all over the ships and breaking them. Yeah. So there's actually a sign just back down the track that that tells you what it is. So there's an interpretive board here up above uh, Shipwreck Bay that's got some information about the boats. Um, the big boat was called the Dara and um, that boat uh, was from 1865 to 1951 so that big boat down there with the ribs sticking out of the water that was only put there in 1951. People in that boat have just gone off Shipwreck Bay, yeah heading back over to Littleton. There's the most complete boat down there. That was a, a steamboat, so that uh, big round cylinder was the engine. Yeah, and you can see there's another one right next to it that's just barely sticking up out of the rocks. So what you can see is, you can see six, and at low tide you can see another two out there. So that's looking to Gibby's Gibby's Pass. Uh, Gibby's Pass is a, a low point on the south side of uh, Littleton Harbour and um, there's a road over there and that's the way people get back and forth between uh, Christchurch and um, Diamond Harbour, Puriel Bay, places like that. Yeah. Yeah, um, really lovely views uh, looking out over the head of the bays here um, and then down to Shipwreck Bay and over across to um, Governor's Bay over there on the far side. There's a few stands of fully mature pine trees on the island planted by the farmers. Um, they're really old, like they'd be over 150 years old. Yeah, that's why they're so big. Good shade though on a sunny day. There's a uh, track there until the interior of the island. Um, I'm not going to go up that way because I know just around the corner there's a slightly less steep one. So I just keep walking around the island. I'm round on the southeastern side of the island now, and so the track continues off in that direction. Um, I'm looking down at, I don't know what that bay is, I've, I've forgotten what it's called. Um, there's big um, shell banks down there, and what they do is every so often they come and they take the shells off the shell banks, because they grind it up and turn it into limestone powder. Yeah, um, it was an industry on the island for nearly a hundred years and um, they only stopped doing it uh, back in the uh, early 1980s. Yeah, um, and so eventually, you know, if they leave it, they'll, they'll build up a massive big shell bank just off the beach there. It's all the shellfish that get washed up to the heads of the bay up here. So um, you can walk down there if you want to. I, I won't walk down there. But you can walk down there and then you can walk on the beach all the way around to the other side of the island. But um, I prefer to just stay on the track, it's a wee bit easier. Lovely bench track on this side of the island. 
the um, native trees around here, the native bush, this is the stuff that was planted uh, first, like around about 30 years ago. So it kind of gives you an idea of what it's, the whole island's going to be like eventually. You know, um, they're quite big. Uh, Manuka trees, Kanuka trees, a whole lot of other different uh, species of trees that um, once grew on the island. Um, one of the things that you will see over on the side of the island, especially around here, is quail. I've seen them in this area every time I've walked through. In fact, there's one on the track just up in front of us there. Um, yeah, they're not native quail, they're California quail. But So um, that's the closest point of land to Quail Island. Um, that's a headland that's jutting off Banks Peninsula over there and when you have a really low tide, um, there's a big mud bank out there right across. You can actually walk from Quail Island over to that headland. Um, out in the middle there's a channel though that is like about waist deep. So it's not like you're walking on mud the whole way across. Um, you are like wading through water. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, but you know, you'd see if you come over here, you'd see what it looks like. There's no access off that um, headland to the road though, because it's actually a private farm over there. And um, I have heard the farmer get shirty with people walking across his land. Another seat there that you can sit on. The um, track up to the top of the island is just down here in this wee saddle. This is the track climbing up to the centre of the island. You can see it's pretty steep. This isn't the best way to get up there. The best way is on the other side of the island. Yeah, it's a nice easy um, even track going up there. So I'll just keep climbing. I'll come back once I get to the top. That tree trunk is just alive with, uh, with ants. They're going down into the cracks of it. Yeah, so I made it to the top. There's bloody steep coming up that way. So it's much, much less steep if you come up the main track, which is down there. You can see there's some people walking down the track. Yeah, but um, this is the high point of Quail Island. You're 442 metres above sea level. And so you've got awesome, awesome views. Of all of Littleton Harbour. You can see all of Littleton Harbour except for a little bit there and just immediately over towards Diamond Harbour. Yeah, but look, you can see right up the bays, right out onto the island. So um, just here there's a um, big totem uh, Maori carving. That marks the high point of the island. Yeah, and then uh, I'll just be heading back down the track that I came up and I'm heading down that way, down to that um, to that peninsula there. You can see the track runs around the uh, right hand side and then goes down to the bay over there. Cool. Yeah, so that's the Murray carving. Got my bag over there. The only shade is uh, the shade from that carving, so there's not a lot of shade up here. Heading back down to the main track, you can see it down there. So I'm back on the main track. Um, I'm heading for Skinner's Beach, which is about maybe 30 minutes walk away. Yeah, it's just off to my left hand side here, but you can't really see it at the moment. Uh, another small quarry, just for use on the island. Yeah, there's a pile of rocks that were removed from the quarry but never used and then that's looking back up to where that totem pole is yeah so there's looking down to that um, beach where they took all the shellfish all the shells yeah kayaks water skis there's a couple of boats out there so um, one of the purposes of the island in the past was as a leper colony and so there were people on the island, lepers on the island up to the 1920s. Um, the last leper on the island um, who died here in 1923 was um, Ivan Skelton. Um, he lived over on this side of the island 
and he's buried over here but nobody actually marked where he was buried and so um, back in the 90s they put that cross up as a commemoration for him that's not actually where he's buried but he's buried somewhere in this general area around here because he was buried near to his hut and his hut was in this area and so you can see his name on the cross there and then there's just some information about him he was from Western Samoa. They used to send uh, they used to send people with uh, leprosy um, here from all over the Pacific. Fairly sad, really, isn't it? And then I'm just continuing down to Swimmers Bay this way. Yeah, track just winds down um, the side of the hill, and then um, you get down to a flat piece on the eastern side of the island that's like a camping ground picnic area it's got picnic tables uh, water and a toilet yeah so this part of the track is clay and it's really really slippery um, if there's been any rain or if it is raining don't walk on the soil um, you'll fall over I've fallen over over walking down here two or three times now it's just too slippery so that's Swimmers Bay over there in the distance yeah A few trees have fallen down on this side of the island into the water. It's the wind. That hut up there is a, um, a reproduction of the kind of huts that the lepers lived in. So if there's no one over there I'll go walk up and show you what it looks like inside. And back when there was a leper colony, uh, this was a place where there were some um, administrative built-ins for the lepers. There were a couple of people that dealt with them, delivered food to them and stuff, but um, you couldn't have any physical contact with them. Yeah, because leprosy is like highly infectious. This is a replica of one of the lepo cottages. And so they all lived in individual spaces, roughly the same as this. And so they would have had a, a bunk tables, um, books and stuff like that, yeah, no heating, quite a stark life really. There's an information board in here that basically tells you about it, um, and a bit of information uh, about who stayed here, when they were here, um, what happened to the lepers, that kind of thing. There's a uh, panel on the door, they built this in 2002, yeah, just a bit of information about who worked on it. So I'll just continue on down to the beach. This retaining wall here was built by prisoners from Littleton Jail, um, they used to send them all over the place to um, do construction works because it was hard labour yeah and um, the stone was quarried from the other side of the island and then just put over here lots of buildings in Littleton are made from stone from this island you got two options here stay on this level here and keep walking around to um, uh, to um, Swimmers Beach Wakamaru Beach or you can go downhill to Skiers Beach um, down at Skiers Beach there's uh, toilets and there's a wee beach you can be on um, but we're going to go around to um, Swimmers Beach so we'll keep going that way so that's Skiers Beach down there it's a nice beach A hundred metres down to uh, Swimmers Bay, Waikamarara Bay. There's the beach down there. So this is Swimmers Bay. 
this is the centre of all the activity on the island. I'm just going to go over to the shade over there and sit down and have some lunch. Yeah, so there's a uh, lot of boats here, a couple of yachts, um, jet skis, paddle boards. Really popular spot for boaties here. <coughs> so I've got some. Um, tuna and some crackers for lunch and I've made up a wee bit of um, fighter fresh yeah so that's what I'm having for lunch and I've still got a few snacks that I haven't eaten so I'll have some of those yeah it's all good Is, uh, one of the old quarantine buildings on the island. So they've got some interpretive panels set up on the inside to tell you about the history of uh, the island, all the things that happened here, how they're conserving it, the animals on the island. And so this was the Quail Island Immigration Quarantine um, Barracks. When people came into um, Canterbury Province, they had to quarantine for a couple of weeks um, to stop things like smallpox and uh, yellow fever and all those other kind of fevers getting into the community. Yeah. Cool. It's worth coming in here, like coming to the building and have a look. Don't know why that picnic table's in here. It used to be outside. Bit stupid. At the far end of that barracks is a um, a little shelter. Yeah, just so you can get out of the weather if it turns bad. He's looking down the beach. Bit of information. So I'm just heading back round to the jetty. I'm too early. Jetty, um, the boat doesn't come until uh, 3 and then leaves at 3.30. Yeah, beach is quite busy back there. Just want to have enough time to get back to the jetty. Yeah, so um, I'm over on Quail Island. So Quail Island is um, in the centre of um, Littleton Harbour and um, so it's basically um, the only way you can get to the island if you don't have a boat is there's a water taxi. So you come across on the water taxi and then there's um, a hut over here you can stay in overnight. You can camp on Swimmers Beach um, and there's also like uh, a couple of tracks. There's one that goes right around the island, ones that go across the island. And so um, you come over for the day um, and go for a walk or you can stay in the hut overnight um, or you can go to Swimmers Beach. The um, water's warm enough where you can actually like swim in the sea and there's a whole lot of people swimming. Yeah, so um, yeah, so what I did today is I walked around the outside of the island as you saw and uh, visited the hut on the way past um, and I'm just uh, here at Swimmers Beach getting ready to head back to the dock, um, the boat's due in about an hour's time, yeah so I'm just heading back around there, it takes about half an hour from here um, and I'll just stop on the way and just um, take some photos and you know yeah just have a look. There's something interesting, it's a um, uh, basically like a flat bottom boat that they've made with um, 40 gallon drums and they've got a outboard motor on the back of the thing to um, propel it round. Yeah, they've been back and forth around the island a couple of times, so I wouldn't think it would be seaworthy enough to bring it all the way over here, but obviously it is, because they got here. That's Mount Bradley over there in the distance, and on the left-hand side is um, Mount Herbert. Um, I've been up Mount Herbert before, I actually did a vlog about that. Um, at the valley on this side of the hill going up to Mount Bradley, um, which is this one here, um, that's the Orton Bradley estate. Yeah, 
and so um, a, a, a group of um, different environmental um, concerns have basically bought the top of both of those mountains and they're going to turn them into a new recreation park. They've got plans to completely plant the whole top of the mountain with native trees. It's going to be like a 30 year project so um, eventually the whole top of that mountain is going to be covered in native forest be uh, fantastic to see but obviously I won't be here because it'll take 200 years for it to grow properly. So I'm just walking back around to the jetty. It's uh, 2.35. The boat arrives in about 40 minutes. Um, takes about 20 minutes to walk around there so yeah I'll only be sitting for 20 minutes that's the uh, remnants of a dock that used to be on the island um, they used it for taking stock on and off the island the sheep and cattle they had here yeah they um, dismantled it about two years ago because it was getting too dangerous uh, people walked out on it and pieces fell down there's a last look at the side of the island so there's that uh, leper cottage uh, skiers uh, beach swimmers beach yeah and then just coming to the track the last section of the track back up to the dock is quite steep you just have to walk up this hill um, just take your time and then um, just past the trees there where it goes around behind the trees uh, you start heading back down to the dock again so I'll just start walking up right that's the end of the trek that's going down to the dock so um, we've completed the circuit so yeah we'll be heading down there so that's one of the bays on the far side of Littleton Harbour and uh, Mount Herbert the range right there and then uh, next to it over here is uh, the Orton Bradley Estate. Just heading down to the uh, dock now. It's a bit windy on the side of the island. Should be a bit choppy on the boat on the way back. There's a day shelter down here by the dock that you can uh, sit inside if the weather's not very good because it's sometimes windy and cold and if it's raining. Yeah, so three-sided, but um, protects you from most of the conditions. So there's the day shelter. Yeah, protects you from the worst of the weather. Yeah, so there's the dock to the island. We're lucky we have that, you wouldn't be able to get here if there wasn't a dock. Because there isn't a beach where a bigger boat could land. So I'm just going to sit in the day shelter and wait for 20 minutes and then the boat should be on its way over. Um, when you finish the track, you, just, you can come and sit in the day shelter here and then uh, it just keeps you out of the elements. Um, it's got a nice view out to sit, you cut it over, um, there aren't any toilets down here so you have to make sure you go to the toilets down the far end before you start, yeah. But uh, it gives you somewhere to sit while you're waiting for the boat to come up.
really, really nice over here on Quail Island. Absolutely, definitely worth coming over for the day. Um, bring your family with you, come over with a big group. Um, it's always better if you book your tickets on the ferry beforehand and the hut here on the island has to be booked. So um, make sure you do that and it's just on the online hut booking system on the dock website. Yeah, cool. So um, see you on the next trip.